Good morning, everybody. I hope you all have a wonderful Monday morning, ready for the week to come. Um, so my name is Herman Strauss. I'll be presenting to you this morning. And just a, a little bit of a background of why I'm talking about this. So throughout my career of, what, 25 odd years dealing with, uh, with difficult customers, amongst other things, um, and also within a technical environment, I, I found it very difficult. And I tried to understand how, how to do it better. Well, frankly, what I wanted to know is how do I make them listen? I read books, I did courses, I did all sorts of things. And then I realized <laughs> it's never simple. And it's never, it's, there, there's no golden rule to, to make every, everybody do what you want them to do. But throughout this process, I did learn a few lessons that really helped me. Um, and that really made life a little, a little easier in, in dealing with difficult customers. And that's what I would like to share with you today. Some of the thoughts that, that made a difference to me. <clears throat> so just bear with me so I can get the technology working on my side. Okay. So the one golden rule that we all know about, the customer is always right. Um, what's your, what is your thoughts on this? Is the customer always right? Um, I mean, this has been preached as the ultimate answer to all our problems, isn't that? Um, and I've, I've listened to this. You hear all sorts of variations of this, of this thing. I think you would all agree with me by now that uh, that statement is not quite correct. The customer think he or she is always right. I think that's much more accurate, don't you think? Um, and that is one of the realities that we have to deal with when you deal with people. I mean, people have, have different ways of thinking, different experiences, different perceptions, especially when it gets to a technical environment, an environment where the normal homeowner think they understand what, what happens in the plumbing system. But you as the expert know that they don't really do. And now you have to engage with them in an area where, where you truly are the expert, where they think they know more than, than you, and you have to deal with difficult situations there. To make it a little bit more challenging, if you also look at the Con Consumer Protection Act, I mean, what, is, what does this act say? It places a lot of responsibility on the plumber, on any service provider, um, home owners, especially those that, that take action, that's active, um, tend to know about this and they demand their rights. I mean, a, uh, a plumber, any supplier, is responsible to inform the customer. Well, they were you an expert, you have to inform the customer so that they know. You have to provide them um, compliant service, compliant products, ensure that products and services are safe, charge a fair price, deliver what is committed, after-sales support. I mean, in, in, in all of those situations, it, it all adds areas where it is potential for, for, for issues, potential for this difficult customers to deal with it, and poten uh, potential for, for challenges to arise. Now, for me, there are two basic principles to consider. So again, I would encourage you, don't just listen to what I say. There's a lot of books, there's a lot of material out there that can give you a lot of good information. In my mind, throughout all of those books, these are two of the most important um, aspects and practical aspects to consider when, you, when you're dealing with customers. As I say, that made a, a big difference to me. What do you want to achieve? Ask yourself the question, what do you want to achieve? And then understand why. Not understand why you chose that, that you have to understand as well, but understand why there's conflict with your customer. So let's look at the first one first. The first one, what do you want to achieve? So different scenarios may require different outcomes. Firstly, and very importantly, it is your choice. So in this presentation, we're not talking about ethics and what is right and what is wrong. We, we assume that everybody acts ethically, everybody's got just the, 
the best intentions at heart, not going to dis- uh, debate that part of it. But within, even within that scenario, you have a choice. What is the best, the ideal outcome that you want to achieve because you're in control of this process? Your choice have consequences. And what con- consequences are acceptable to you? And what are you willing to pay for it? We'll get to some examples now. Um, very important, uh, if you have time, if you have the luxury of time, it's really, really worthwhile to sit back a moment before you engage with, with a customer, before you start the process, um, to just think about it, plan it a little bit, and then offer your response, especially with email these days. It is so quick if you receive an email and you're frustrated and upset to shoot a quick email back. <laughs> One of the most practical pieces of advice that I've received, and I find it, well, I'll, I encourage you to do the same. The moment you get an email that upset you, type the reply, don't send it. Wait, if you can, to the next morning before you send it. So you read it again. In many cases, you, you are in a much better position to reword it so that it uh, get a, a much better outcome of what you want to achieve out of that. So for each case, there's different things to consider. When you, when you think about what do you want to achieve? So is it that all you want in this specific case that you want to avoid a bad review? Is this a case where the customer is, you believe is unreasonable, the bad review from the customer can affect your business going forward? Um, if your objective is to just have a happy customer, Think about how do you how you respond to that. Is this the right the right place to stand your ground and upset, and you know the customer is going to walk away um, upset? To what point? What is the cost? To what point do you compromise, swallow, hold your breath, and just move on, and you end up with a customer that is happy and not going to give you a bad review? Is it that you just want to avoid litigation? Sometimes if you just want to avoid litigation, it, it, you might have to deal with a customer that is never happy, but you know that the service that you've offered is absolutely correct and nobody can hold it against you. Make sure you have a customer that will use you again. Is this one of those cases where you have to say, you know what, this wasn't my fault, but I can, I can get a lot more business out of this one. So let, let's let, uh, let loose. Let, let's go this one. Um, and we make up next time. Is it the case you just want your money back? It, it might have cost you a lot already. I mean, we know that there are sometimes, unfortunately, a lot of very challenging customers out there. And there's many, many more conditions. What I'm trying to explain with this is just give some examples of how to consider what it is that you really, really want out of this. And then whatever you decide to do, focus on the outcome. Focus on the outcome that that you want to receive. How, how do you focus on that? As I say, if it is clear that the customer will not be happy, no matter what, consider walking away um, without losing more time. But sometimes it takes such a lot of energy to, to just try and resolve this issue that if, if you walked away, you might, you might lose a thousand rand, but you, you could have made another 5,000 rand in the same period of time. Consider that. If it's important to show that you are right, calculate what it's going to cost you. If you say, I, I, it is important to, to stand my ground, to whatever resolve this issue, uh, make sure we are right, and figure out how long, how much energy and time can you put into that and do that. I know sometimes we, we, when, when we encourage ourselves, um, we try, we, it's easy to say, man, just, just let it go and move on. Let's acknowledge so there are cases where that is just not the option, where for whatever reason in your personal life you feel this, uh, this is it. I have to have to push this one all, all the way through. Then it's an informed decision. You make your choice, but know what, the, what is the cost of that decision and then focus your energy to achieve that. And then obviously in, in many cases, it is just easier to, to reach some form of a compromise and move on again. Like an informed decision of a, what is the cost? What are you willing to compromise um, in that process? 
The second piece, the second um, aspect that I want to encourage you about is understand why. Whenever you decide how to, how to deal with a customer, first try to understand why did the customer, why, is, why, is, why does the conflict, um, why did the conflict exist? Why is this customer difficult? There's different ways customers can be difficult. It, ca it can be a straight on fight with you, straight on arguments. It can be just a very, very demanding customer. Understand, try to understand why. Ask yourself, if I were in this situation, how would I act? It's, it's always a good guide to, to just use that as information to try and understand. Is the reaction based on fact or perception? Especially in our environment, this, this often happens, that the customer might have perceptions which they believe are fact, and the facts are different. If you understand that that's the case, it gives you information on how to deal with it. Same happens with logic and emotion. Sometimes a, a customer is already upset, already very emotional about something and just doesn't listen to logic anymore. Try to understand when that is the case. And I think as we go through this, I'm sure you, you, you all could have re recognized at the moment that while, while I project this as understanding the customer, all the same, the same applies to yourself as well. Why do you feel the way? Why do you react? Are you reacting on fact or perception? Um, Understand the more facts you have, the more understanding you have of the situation, the better you can choose what to do with it. A very important one to understand as well is what does the customer actually want? What is customers fighting about X, but what does he want? Does he want Y? Does he just want to feel better to show that he's right? Does he actually want a refund? Is he taking a chance and he want more out of the deal than he's... Uh, <laughs> Than he's supposed to get out of the deal, um, that he anticipate that he's going to get more. Just understand, understand why, and understand what the customer is trying to achieve. Sometimes you can bypass a lot of the arguments, a lot of the discussions by getting straight to the point and offering them what they want to achieve, or telling them straight away that there's no way they're going to get that. Again, all going back to what is what is it that you are that you want to. Uh, uh, achieved out of this and that you believe is the right outcome for the situation. But in understanding that, so it's, it's good enough to have some understanding of where it came from and what to do. I keep saying you can plan. So how do, how do you plan for that? What, what do you consider in that process? So the brain, the human brain is a very interesting organ. Um, what, one of the things that makes it fascinating is the fact that different thoughts, different types of arguments originate in different parts of the brain. And I'm most definitely not going to try and give you uh, any lecture on, on the brain and the biology behind it. The important part is that, it, that, that this is the case. There is different areas doing different jobs all at the same time. And then there's a little control center. I can't even remember what the name is of that control center, so I'm not going to try and repeat it. Bottom line, there's some part of the brain that try to make sense out of all of this, that go listen to the logic section of the brain, that go listen to the, to the artistic and the logic and the emotional and the reflex sections, try to make sense out of it. And that part of the brain is the one that gives the answer. Why why do I mention that in this discussion? Why is that important for us to consider? Um, and just give me one moment to explain that. So if we take emotion versus logic. So within your brain, there's a, let's call it a state of mind. There are logic thoughts inside the brain. There are emotional thoughts inside the brain. But that little control center depend, decides where exactly you sit at that stage of the um, of the of your thoughts so for instance if the customer you can see the little angry <laughs> a angry emoji i assume you can figure out that one is the customer so the customer might be sitting on the emotional uh, part of the spectrum customer is upset feeling very emotional about that because they feel hurt they feel whatever they feel but they are upset and they want to want to fight all of this 
Now you, as the responsible plumber, just, just try to explain to the customer, say, but sir, ma'am, you, you're missing the point. This, this is the logic. And you give a lot of logical explanations, which is one of the things that I've done so many times. There's a gap between the two of you. The consumer can't listen, can't appreciate the facts that you bring to the table because the consumer's brain is focusing on the emotion and not focusing on the technical part. It's very, very difficult for the average human to process logic explanations while their brain is in an emotional state trying to do that. Um, so that is a, it's a very important function. That doesn't only happen on a, on a single scale, emotion to logic. But on both of those scales, there's a, a positive and a negative as well. So when people are emotional, it could be a positive or a negative. It could be hate or love. A very, very emotional person that is very, very upset is, it's called hate, <laughs> if we put it that. Well, yeah, it's maybe not the, the, the best terminology, but th that's a very negative state to be. But strong emotions in a positive sense is love. That could be a, um, a tremendous support for the plumber as well, if you can get the, um, your customer to that point. The same, same applies to logic. Logic in a, in a negative sense, call it hate logic, is a complete misunderstanding. And on the positive side, on the love side, it is a, a full understanding and deeper appreciation of all the, all the aspects of it. And across the board, if you can understand where your customer sits within that state of mind, it gives you the, the, the tools, it gives you something to work on to try and address your customer. So assume worst case scenario, your customer sits right at the left-hand bottom, uh, left bottom corner. The customer is upset. It's emotional. They really, really just want what they want without thinking about it. If you respond with, a, with normal logic, you're too far away. If you can uh, cater your response, modify your response a little bit so that it overlaps with the emotion of the, of the um, customer, what will happen is you will drag the customer a little bit long. You change their state of mind. In other words, first address the emotions. Um, bring them towards the logic side so that where you actually want to end at the end of the day is typically on a logic side with a customer being happy and supportive of, of what you do. This is the, po the, the position where you can actually um, convince the customer where the customer can listen to the logic of the situation. So I know this is a very much uh, oversimplified explanation. Um, and there's a lot of uh, practical ways that you can try and apply to achieve this. I was trying to explain the principle of the state of mind, the principle that it isn't um, good to to, to treat and to respond to an upset customer outside of his state of mind or too far away from his state of mind. It is a, it, you, you need a process of dragging and changing their state of mind so that they can listen. The same apply in all difference. It might be that the customer thinks, thinks on the logical side um, and that you have to drag them over to the emotional side. It might be on different ways. And the one practical thing is I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you tips on exactly how to do that, how to change their state of mind. I found that if you understand this, the majority of the actions is simply common sense. It is something that we are born with. We are born with the ability to recognize other people's emotions, sometimes easier than others, but we can, we, we, we can perceive that that's part of human nature. Also part of human nature is a ability to um, respond to that specific um, emotion. If you know that somebody is very emotional, um, you can respond with a soft answer, for instance. We will get you some tips um, to, to help you a little bit along that way. So one of the tips that is quite important, and uh, I know the example I'm using can, can ev evoke some, 
some strong emotions. It's not about the example. It's about the principle. <laughs> but yeah, prevention is better than cure. This is very, very important. In the medical field, vaccinations is the preventative measure to help against disease. Okay, so let's park that one. And we're not talking about corona and all of the other ones. In principle, let's use automotive, easier. Um, regular service prevents breakdown. Slowing down while you're driving limits the chance that you'll be driving off the road. Help. Good, a good meal prevents exhaustion. But, I mean, you can get so many, so many different examples of prevention is better than cure. Exactly the same happens in this case. If you know and you can see that the customer is going to be upset, do whatever you can to prevent that. Even, even further than that, throughout your career, you've learned a lot of lessons. So you can treat all of your customers, whether they're friendly or not, no matter what warning signs you see from day one. You can treat all of them in a preventative may, way. Treat all of them so that you give them the information, so that you preempt whatever they could potentially be upset about, preempt whatever could cause issues going forward so that it is much easier to deal with it when it happens. And most probably you would have prevented that even before it occurred. Again, I want to encourage you. We are all born with the ability to recognize, to perceive human emotions, to see trends in what happened. Listen to that. Even if it doesn't always make sense at the moment, listen to what you, what you experience and react to that. Try to react uh, preventative as far as possible. The one other tip I'd like to add is uh, defensive response. So this is, I think, in my experience, one of the most critical um, and effective pieces of information to consider, especially in most cases when you have a difficult customer, your customer sits on the emotional spectrum of the of the brain map um, or emotional spectrum in the state of mind if the customer starts and give comments that is really hurtful and really nasty and really unreasonable and your immediate response is a attack back you will make it worse i'm not we're not talking about what's fair and what's right we're talking about what is the reaction bear in mind what do you want to achieve with your response if you want to achieve with your response that, you know what, I, I will fight you until, until you know I'm right, then go ahead with, your, with, with, with an angry response and you will drive them um, more emotional. If your aim is to um, settle the situation, to make it better, to get to some form of, of a, re a resolution, avoid a, a defensive response as as far as you can try to um try to make the customer understand try to first or well one of one of the practical things is simply to just calm down with a smile and then make sure the customer listen make sure the customer understand that you have listened in a lot of cases a lot of the um, challenges happen because the customer cannot understand or doesn't believe that you actually listen, that you actually hear what they, what they were saying. Um, plus, also understand, and especially when somebody is emotional, if they, if they haven't had the opportunity to express their mind, to express their opinion, they will not be open to listen to any reply that you've given. So first, acknowledge to the customer that you've, that you've heard what they say before you go further. Again, you, you're trying, one of the things you're trying to avoid a, a defensive answer, you want to give a positive response. It's not always possible. Starting point is first make sure they, they hear, they understand that you listen and that you're going to try and respond to their actual complaint, to the actual statement they make. One of the things that often go wrong is, I mean, this principle, we all, we all know about it. Make sure they know you've listened. If you just say, I hear you, 
or I understand, it's not very convincing. Um, yes, in the absence of anything else, it, it's okay. It's better than nothing. But I've, I've even found customers that found it almost offensive. They don't um, undermine me. Don't make us if you understand. So try to repeat what they've said in your own words. So I understand that you are not happy with the pricing that I've changed. I understand that you um, want this to look different than what it lands. Trying to, trying to put some, some facts around that so that they can appreciate the fact that you, you have listened. That opens their mind um, to whatever you have to say next because now they know you have listened. They know you at least understand what they, what they complain about. And now you can go further. If you got it wrong, then it helped both of you. The customer will say, whoa, that's not what I said. They'll explain, you'll understand, and you can then respond to it correct. The other sentence, please, please, please avoid. Yes, but. I know it. I made that mistake so many times. It comes so easy. Um, and I so often feel that this is the right response. Yes, but. Um, that is one of, one of the responses that just fume up the party on the other side. And again, understand, all of this applies not only to your customer, to yourself as well. Think about your own state of mind when you do this. When you go through the process, control, regulate your own state of mind. I think the last tip that I would like to add into this, and again, very much common sense, but so, so, so important. Remain honest. This honesty can ruin your relationship on so many, so many levels. This honesty has got a way to, to seep out somewhere along the line. Maybe not now, maybe tomorrow, um, maybe somewhere loud. And understand that this honesty doesn't mean I've straight out lied to you. I could have sort of not said everything that I was supposed to say now. I could have tried to hide this. I found that in many, many cases, Oh, accepting not all cases, if things go wrong, if you admit and you say, oh, I see this is, this is wrong. Oh, I see I made a mistake. Admit your mistake. It is often one of the easiest way to make peace, make friends again, and move on. Calculate the cost of not doing that. Calculate the cost of trying to cover up something that, that did go wrong. I've always said it's so difficult to deal with this difficult customers especially when they are right. Think twice when you deal with a situation like that to see how, do you, how you respond to that and to respect their intelligence and their integrity in the process as well. So in conclusion, the main message I'm trying to get across, and as I say, that worked for me. Whenever you deal with a difficult customer, keep your goal in mind. Very important. And speak to your customer in a way that the customer will be able to understand. That way, there's a, at least some hope of getting to a good and a positive resolution. Uh, thank you very much. And if anybody wondered, I, 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 I still struggle with difficult customers. It's a, it's a continuous challenge. Goodbye, everybody.